So we talked a bit about the idea of including a categorical variable in a multiple regression model. And <clears throat> I should point out, in the, the previous um, point of me talking, I was talking about using variable x1 of age and x2 of smoking. Um, I've actually uh, mixed that up. What I've done in R is worked with the other variable of biological sex, male or female. All the ideas still hold because it's two lines. <clears throat> so what I've done is fit the model using age and sex um, as my numeric and categorical variable. What I've done is gone through an R, you can look at that separate video. First I fit the model with no interaction or no effect modification. Can I got this from R? So this is the model that forces them to have parallel lines. You can look at that separate video to see exactly um, how I got this from R. And I've also fit the model including an interaction or effect modification. So allowing the effect of age to change for males or females, or the effect of sex to change depending on age. And here's the model you get. Again, you can look at that separate video to see how this has gotten from R. So we were talking about how this essentially produces two separate regression lines. So I want to show you how using the model output, how we can produce the two lines. And I should mention here, biological sex was coded as zero for female, one for male. So females being the reference, and we have an indicator um, if the sex is male. So first, for females, the mean, FEV is 0.2814 plus 0.22 times the age plus 0.323 times an indicator if sex is male. Right? Since they're female, this is going to take on a value of zero. And that term's actually going to disappear. This is going to be 0.323 times zero. Okay, so I'm just going to get that off of here. Then, if we want to work out the line for males, the mean FEV is 0.2814 plus 0.22 times the age plus 0.323. And again, this indicator takes in a value of 1 if they're male. Right here we're saying this is the line for males, so that takes in a value of 1. So this is 0.2814 plus 0.323, right, so this term becomes part of the intercept, plus 0.22 times h. Or if you add those together, 0 0.6044 plus 0.22 times the h. Um, and of course I want to say, since I'm the one standing uh, here teaching this, I'm going to do things step by step. You, of course, can skip steps. Right? This second line is probably not necessary for most of you. But I want to do it step by step as I'm the one explaining things. You can cut the corners where you're able to and comfortable to. So here's the regression line or equation for females. Here it is for males. Now, if we took a look at the two of those, here's age. Here's the FEV. If we go down to an age of zero, first let's add the line for females. Their intercept is 0.2814, and the slope of the line is 0.22. So this is for females, and the slope of that line, 0.22. Now if we look at it for males, their intercept, 0 0.6044, so up here, 0 0.6044, and the slope of 0 0.22. So here it is for males. Again, the same slope, which was by design. Right. We force these two um, lines to be parallel. So what we're saying here is the lung capacity of males tends to be higher than females, but the amount that is higher is the same for every age. Okay. So this model would suggest that the, si the rate that males and females' bodies grow at is roughly the same. Right? Their lung capacity increases 
um, the same amount as age goes up, but males' bodies tend to be bigger and they tend to stay bigger by the same amount, or their lungs are bigger by the same amount. Now, <clears throat> let's look at the same um, set of data, but if we allow these slopes to be different, or right, if we were to think there's interaction or effect modification. So here's the model we get uh, when fitting it in R or any piece of software. And if we worked out the model for females, the mean FEV is 0.85 plus 0.16 times the age minus 0.78, in an indicator if sex is male. Right? Since they're female, this is going to take on a value of zero. Plus 0.111. Now this is the interaction term. Right? This is how the age effect changes for males. Times age, times the indicator if sex is male. Right? We're looking at females, so this is zero. So both of these terms are going to disappear. Okay, so I'll just erase them. So again, if you're doing this on your own, you could probably have just jumped right there, right? You know they're zero, just leave them out. If we're looking at it for males, the mean FEV is 0.85 plus 0.16 times the age, <coughs> minus 0.78 times one. Right now we're looking at males. The indicator for male takes in a value of one, plus 0.111 times the age, times one, right? The indicator for males takes in a value of one. And now again, the extra step I'm gonna write out, 0.85 minus 0.78, right? These are both the constant terms, plus 0.16 plus 0.111 times the age. Okay. And the reason I wanted to group these is I've often thought about it. One way you can think of this term here as being the adjustment that's done to the intercept, and this term here as the adjustment that's done to the slope. So if you work those out, 0.07 plus 0.271 times the h. And again, so now when we allow there to be interaction or effect modification, Here's the regression equation we'd end up with for females, and here's the equation for males. If we were to take a look at plotting these out, here's age, here's the FEV, and let's look at age zero. First, let's do it for females. Their intercept is 0 0.85 and the slope is 0.16. So these are females. Again, this slope is 0.16. So that's the slope of the line there. If we're adding the line for males, the intercept is lower. It starts down here, 0.07, and the slope 0.271. The slope 0.271. Okay, so a model like this would suggest that males tend to start off with lower FEV than females, but it increased at a quicker rate. So what we're going to learn as we go through the course and talk about interaction or effect modification is first try to think about which one of these models makes more sense conceptually. And then we'll also learn statistically which one seems to better fit the data or um, better describe the relationships that we're observing within the data. And for now, what we want to do is just talk about this is what no interaction looks like. This is what interaction looks like. Here's how we can work with the models and um, get each of the lines from the full model expression. Stick around, guys. There's more to see and please stay safe.